human behavior is available as data to marketers. And yes. if you can think through that, and if you can see, hey, okay, instead of just targeting this kind of a person by saying that okay, they're in this location and you know they make this much, they are in this age, sort of figuring out like that. Instead, if you lead by psychographically, right, you have to be an artist in the streets and a scientist in the spreadsheets. And um, the biggest idea that that you have to keep in mind when you're optimizing for UX is the concepts of flow and friction. Hi, hello, and welcome to our first podcast interview of Shopify Made Easy. I'm your host, Indra, and I'm thrilled to kick off today's show with someone incredibly talented and full of positive energy. He's a marketing expert who's going to share a lot of strategies on the e-commerce platform, which will help you to be a successful Shopify store owner. Happy to introduce Arvind Sundar, the founder of Put the Player First, a gamified framework for growth that turns business building into a fantasy adventure. He has trained professionals from Flipkart, Akamai, Citrix, Walmart, and quite a few more. So without any delay, over to you, Arvind. Tell us something about yourself and your work. All right. Uh, thank you, Indra, for having me here. And thank you to Shopify Made Easy as well. I am uh, a marketing coach by profession. I run that as a business. I help founders uh, grow their businesses using the power of uh, marketing strategy, branding, content, and uh, emails and funnels. And uh, in the past, I have worked with uh, a couple of D2C brands in the toy space and in the apparel space. So happy to be here and share whatever I do know. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's really nice to hear. And that's exactly why we're here today. So can we just jump into the discussion now? Let's do this. Okay. So let's begin with this. So what are the mistakes that you think most of the Shopify store owners make? Hmm. Now, I have thought about this question quite a lot uh, because I do do some consulting. And what I've discovered is that uh, when you look at Shopify owners um, or, or e-commerce stores in general, what ends up happening is that there is a spectrum. There's a spectrum on one side where you have everyone who is extremely data-driven, right? And performance marketing and funnels and optimization and step-by-step -step conversions and stuff like that. Then on the other end, you have the branding folks, right? Who are relying on personality and, uh, uh, you know, branding and, and storytelling and all that. What I've seen is that people skew too far towards one side of the spectrum. And honestly, to succeed, mm -hmm. uh, you do need to have a balance of both of those, right? Yeah. So that's that's the first. Uh, the second is that there was a concept published by Google earlier called the moment of truth. Mm -hmm. uh, when it, zero moment of truth, actually. Uh, I think it's an old paper, about 10, 15 years old now. But the concept is that the moment of truth uh, is when someone's going to be making a buying decision. You, as a brand, as a business, need to be available to them at that point of time. Now, it could be exactly. through search. It could be through top of mind recall. It could be through, you know, uh, just marketing efforts. It doesn't matter. If you are not present at that buying moment for your customer, you are going to lose out on that sale. Oh, so okay. not putting in enough effort to be relevant at that point when the customer is making the decision, that's a second mistake. And the third, and I think, you know, this is an emerging trend, which I hope, uh, you know, will definitely take over uh, most of these things is when it comes to marketing, mm -hmm. there is usually like, like, like a brand that, that comes forward, right? Like, like it could be like ABC or DEF. Yes. But it's, it's rare, or rather the time when businesses could afford to be just a brand and, and you know, still make it successfully. Uh, yes. I think, I think that time is winding down. I think what's going to change and what I recommend that you know most people do is inject their personality when it comes to marketing. And what I mean by that is, yes, you have a fantastic brand, you have a great design team, and you have beautiful assets, but having a face to the brand, I'm not talking like, like a hired influencer or something like that. No, like, like you as the founder and you know involving your customers as you're building out the product, as you're building out the business, in public, I think that's going to be like a big, big, big plus. Yes. So these would be the three mistakes. That okay, I feel. okay. So that's that's what you say, branding awareness. That's also one yeah. of the most important aspect that we have to consider. So thank you for those inputs. I'm pretty sure now that they all know the do's and don'ts of running a Shopify store, right? 
Okay, so moving on to something which will interest every individual Shopify store owner here, and that's going to be conversion. Mm -hmm. So conversion <laughs> metrics are vital for any online store. So mm -hmm. what would be the tips that you would give to our Shopify store owners to optimize their websites? Right, right. So I want to split my answer into two parts. I'm going to okay. split this, even though they are cognitively similar, I'm mm -hmm. making this artificial distinction okay. so that uh, it can be two lens with which uh, any 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 Shopify store owner can look at the sales experience. Okay, so one is the user experience, and the other is the sales experience. And what I mean by that is, in the user experience, I'm just talking about the technical and the psychological flow of things, right? Mm -hmm. In the sense that, are your pages loading fast? Uh, are they accessible? Are they lightweight? Yes. The biggest, um, the biggest idea that that you have to keep in mind when you're optimizing for UX mm -hmm. is the concepts of flow and friction. Mm -hmm. You want your customers to flow through the parts that are good for you, and you want to add friction to the things that are not good for you. Okay. Yes. Now, what happens is when we don't look at that experience in that spectrum of flow and friction is mm -hmm. we unintentionally add flow to things like allowing people to easily abandon cart or giving yes. them like by adding a, let's say a menu item on, on a checkout page, for example, mm -hmm. it's a rookie mm -hmm. mistake, but that's an example of how there's, you know, it's easier for them to jump out, right? You don't want to do that. So evaluating the entire customer journey from the concept of flow and friction and intentionally designing that would be a, one of the fastest uh, ways to uh, increase conversion rates. Cool. More tactically, it would be things like load speed. It'll be things like accessibility. It would be things like A-B testing to actually see what sort of message actually leads to complete throughput. Because, and I'll be talking a little bit more about this later as well, okay. is you have to be a blend of an artist and a scientist, right? Uh, and okay. uh, what I mean by that is in the streets, like when you're talking in terms of marketing and all of that, you definitely want to be an artist in the public facing side of uh, your persona. But in the spreadsheets, you definitely want to be a scientist, right? You want to analyze everything. Sure. It's 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 pretty uh, basic in terms of uh, doing business, right? So that was the user experience side of things. Mm -hmm. From the sales experience, uh, the mental model that I would recommend um, would be to think of your Shopify store, right? Like and and all the elements of your store coming together to become like this this. Providing a handheld sales experience, like, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 years ago, when you go into a departmental store, right? Or okay. maybe it happens nowadays, too, because yes, yes. I do all my shopping online. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that's true. Uh, it is true. It is I think true. that's why we're here today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but, but what if you can emulate that? What if you could give that experience where uh, your, 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 your store is providing a very personalized audience of one type? experience right so you already have the data and you know with with enough magic and sorcery you can definitely use that data to provide a much more detailed and personalized uh, experience so that that's going to be there i mean if you take it right like so i have this 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 vision and i have done this before for uh, one of my clients it is possible that you can load up all your leads into a CRM system, uh -huh. and then you do lead scoring. And then depending on the lead scoring, you can do custom uh, automations. So essentially, uh, based on user behavior, based on customer behavior, based on the sales that you have going on, based on the preferences of the customer, you can go like hyper targeted. And I know, I know that most uh, Shopify stores don't have massive teams behind them. But if you can dedicate a resource to this and really, really think through, mm -hmm. you can you can like skyrocket sales. So that was the two things: the user experience part and the sales experience part. Focus on flow and friction for user experience, mm -hmm. and focus on personalization for the sales experience. Wow, wow, wow! That's nice. So I think that's going to bring a great change in conversions, right? Uh, yeah, okay, so now the next big topic: social media. Mm -hmm. So this platform plays a significant role in marketing today. So how can our customers make maximum use of it, and what is the best media that you would suggest? Mm. Right. So. This is, this is a good question, right? And obviously, it's going to change from market to market. Mm -hmm. But overall, uh, when it comes to channels, I would recommend that focusing on video, uh, particularly vertical video, right? Uh, whether it's in emerging markets like India, or if it is you know global markets, well-established markets like the US, 
vertical video without a doubt is 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 what the generation is you know uh, skewing towards like yes. people are younger they have more money vertical video typically short form is a good way to do this that mm -hmm. being said there is um and you know i this is not uh, i've done some research on china and how e-commerce works there and this is just a, a data point. I'm going to invite everybody who's watching and listening to this to make their own conclusions. But they have, you know, like like large um, warehouses or factories or offices, right? Whatever you want to call them, mm -hmm. full of live streamers. Okay, there are okay. there are literally like hundreds, if not thousands, of people okay. sitting with a ring light and a phone in front of them, and they are running 24-hour live streams that sell different products. Now, okay. it's it's it, I know. So for you and I who are sitting, uh, you know, in a very different part of the world, to think of something like this sounds ridiculous. But but there is power in being able to sell something live. Like you know, back in the day, we used to have something called a, a tele shopping network, right? Where things would be shown on TV. You could call a number and you could purchase. Yes. I mean, with, with, with YouTube and Twitch, you can very easily set up that sort of an experience, right? Like. I mean, I mean, one guy sitting at home, I can do that on YouTube and Twitch, but imagine what a dedicated team with some sort of regular programming can do. Because what this indicates is that, and this is an age-old old, uh, adage, right? It's an age-old saying. I think I first heard it in like 2010, which is what, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, Red Bull was the primary example. Every company has to become a media company, right? And if you are starting out, uh, building out your media business right now, going vertical video, considering uh, live streams would be very, very beneficial. But, but both of these would pale in comparison to the most valuable asset that any e-commerce brand, any Shopify store can build. And it's going to be community. Okay? okay. And when I'm saying community, it's it's not about just a community around your products. You can totally do that, right? But there is, you can think of, uh, a community with this mental model, right? A community is not just a place for your customers to come hang out and it's eventually buy from you again. Well, that is one of the goals, but the primary goal of the community, and this is something I learned from uh, someone called Deepak. Uh, he runs a community building uh, okay, course okay. out here. And okay. what he taught me was that a community's job is to take someone from point A to point B, right? Mm -hmm. Your product's job, your services job, whatever you're selling, that is also designed to take someone from point A to point B. True. Right? So they're buying something for some reason. It could be they're buying new clothes because they want to look good or they've lost weight or they want to buy shoes because they want to start running, right? Whatever product you're selling, whatever range of products you're selling, do fit into a customer's journey. And I don't mean on your website, but on their, you know, like in meat space in the real world, your products are enabling a customer to go from point A to point B. And what if you built a community around that? What if... The community that you built was designed, you know, it could be before, during, or after your products, right? So if it's before, it could be, let's say that you're selling shoes, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you could start a community of, uh, you know, people who want to train for a marathon, right? So you're not directly selling your shoes, but you are enabling prospective customers to go from, hey, you're sitting on the couch all day to, okay, let's get you ready for your first 5K run, right? So that's that's like, you know, before let's say that for the same shoes example if you want to do it during it could be something like oh, okay you bought your shoes well let's get you uh into a like a like a running program so maybe <laughs> you can launch a runner's community itself yes. maybe if it's after right so once you bought the shoes uh maybe you could run a community of let's say for i think i think asics uh, a shoes brand a uh, footwear brand they actually do this uh you know you could have like like maybe it's like special challenges on strava or something like that right so you can say how the, your customer's journey in relation to your product can be used to build out a community. So that was the channels, vertical video, live streaming, and community. But yes. when it comes to uh, maximum ROI uh -huh. uh, activities, right? And I did hint about this earlier. It's about building in public, right? Um, I have a shocking term for it. I want to call it voyeurism because okay. the moment you say that, it, it conjures up very specific images, right? Because Think of reality shows, right? Like like you have American Idol, we have Big Boss. We have all of these things where people are glued to it and they wonder what's going to happen next. Yes, yes. Why? Because I, th I, think, I think gossip runs in our bloodlines, right? So we definitely yes. want to capitalize on that. But what if, what if you could invite your customers to be a part of this journey, right? What if, what if 
it's it's not they're not just seeing your marketing but they're also seeing what's happening behind the scenes and you package it like a reality tv show right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's going to be and, and you see most of these things are skewing away from the performance marketing side of things right and that is with intention because that stuff like like over time it's going to be giving you marginal returns right so over time the amount of roi that you're going to be getting by optimizing your performance activities will start to diminish, right? So then you have to go into blue oceans, things that are untapped. And this is where the whole media angle comes in. Okay. So that was one, okay. right? Building things in public. Okay. Uh, another one could be to develop a strong personality, right? And what I mean by that is uh, when, when, when people think of your brand, right? They need to associate it with something. Right? The moment people think of me, they're going mm-hmm. to think about gaming or, or you know, yes. uh, fantasy adventures and things like that. Yes. I've I've worked hard to build up that sort of an association. Mm-hmm. But as a Shopify store owner, what is it that you can do to okay. bring that strong association between your brand, the products that you're selling, and a concept? You know, there are a bunch of different questions, but the easiest one is to answer to develop this this strong personality is to think about. What is that 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 big bad evil concept in the world that you stand against? Right. For me, uh, it would be that business building should not be complex. Right. So that's the big idea, and I have this whole lens of gaming associated with it. Right. No. So for you, it might be that hey, Shopify should not be so hard. Right. So Shopify made yes. easy exists to uh, defeat that monster. But what about other brands? Maybe some were saying that hey, sugar is bad. Right. And then they probably have. Uh, chocolates like uh, I forget their names, but you, you know you know what I mean, right? They are opposed to something else. Got and you, got you. By definition, when we're opposed to something, that plants us in a certain place that people understand. Oh, okay, this person or this brand stands against this, so I can align with that. Yes, so that's what I wanted to drive home. Yes, yes, awesome, awesome. So that's a lot of information, and I, I believe know, I you know everybody watching <laughs> this video would be uh, using their social media effectively from now on. So, uh, Evan, now do you have a checklist that you can give to our customers to boost their brand awareness and sales in social media? Hmm. Uh, I'll do you one better. Okay, I'm going to give you three rules. Okay. Okay. And the first and most important rule, like even like this is like the most important rule about marketing as well, which is don't be boring, right? Uh, you don't have to be better than somebody else to stand out. Yes. You have to be different, right? Because uh, contrast is what our brains are trained to recognize. Uh-huh. So if you can give that contrast, awesome, right? So, so don't be boring. Uh-huh. Second thing is uh, when it comes to marketing, it's about defining value, right? And uh, there have been volumes and volumes written about. It. I mean, you have Eugene Schwartz talking about the the, the levels of awareness in uh, scientific uh, advertising. Uh, you yeah. have uh, Robert Collier in his letter book. You have uh, the Boron letters, right? So since the 50s or something, right? And there have been a lot of people who've been talking about this. And one common trend that's emerging, and that is you know evident if you do study these things, is if you, and if you're extending the whole concept of don't be boring is you have to give value and value comes in different forms. It could be, and the easiest way is usually, Hey, uh, here's a discount, right? Or here's a bundle. You can do True. that. I think you get attracted to it. Discounts. <laughs> yes. Yes. But, but here's the challenge, right? If you're doing it, so can I, and so can like 15,000 other people who are selling similar products. True. So what is it that's going to help you stand out? Right. So, uh, you can, you can do that with your voice. You could do that with the tone of communication could be with the experiences that you're providing the kind of information you're giving because the moment you shift away from selling, uh, Hey, I'm just another commoditized product. And then you say that I am this thing with this, you know, I'm selling this product, which signifies this experience. And if you can make that connection happen in your customer's head, you're golden. All so right. those would be the top two things I'd recommend. Don't be okay. boring. Give okay. solid value. All right. So I think you else, you've made a checklist. You've made a note <laughs> of it as to what yeah, are the Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been thinking. I've been thinking. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Now, the next question that I have for you here is, what are the mm-hmm. emerging techniques that a Shopify store owner must keep an eye on to stay ahead in the e-commerce game? Mm. So I hang out on Twitter a lot, and I am uh, fortunately uh, clued into many of the things that are happening online, right? And uh, what happens? You know, there's there's a there's a curve when it comes to technology adoption, 
And right now, generative AI is uh, taking the world by storm. I think it's been, what, about a year and a half or so. And there have been massive, massive changes, right? So, uh, of course, there is uh, things like... Uh, you know, like chatbots and whatnot, right? So that's that's going to be pretty straightforward. You you know, using generative AI and using AI to sell your products is going to be a a powerful thing. But you do need to figure out how to implement the guardrails around that. So that's that's number one. So one okay. trend is using generative AI and chatbots and using AI to sell. That's number one. Mm -hmm. uh, number two is a shift from demographics to psychographics. Okay. I know it's 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 not cutting edge per se. But when you see that we have more and more access to data, even though companies like Facebook and Google did kind of limit the kind of things that we can do, but human behavior is available as data to marketers. Yes. And if you can think through that, and if you can see, hey, okay, instead of just targeting this kind of a person by saying that okay, they're in this location and you know they make this much, they are in this age, sort of figuring out like that instead if you lead by psychographics if you lead by the problems that you want to solve and yes. how you can um you know set up a net which is like uh, attracting the right kind of attention which your products can solve whether it is emotional whether it is uh, psychological whether it is practical whatever those things are i think leading with psychographics instead of demographics mm -hmm. is going to be a powerful thing Mm -hmm. okay. And finally, one thing I'm really excited about, and you know, I'm 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 just keeping my eye out for this. I'm not seeing anybody else do this just yet, mm -hmm. but is the concept of using avatars. And what I mean by that is okay. not uh, like the uh, you know like like not like little gaming avatars that sort of a thing, but injecting a face into the uh, into the entire shopping mix. Now, let's say that your brand has some sort of a mascot, right? Now, with a little bit of VTubing and some motion rigging, you can essentially be that sort of, you know, you can bring that character to life. Uh, for example, you can check out the stuff that happened in Black Mirror. Mm -hmm. I think there was an episode where like a blue animated bear was brought to life or something. Oh, okay, right? okay. It's scary. But it's crazy. But it is possible. So I'm curious to see where that goes. Okay, okay. So the psychographics was something that is really mm -hmm. interesting. So I think people yeah. are generally glued to someone who solves your problems. Yes. You know, Yes. Be it in any genre. So if Anywhere. the person is yes. going to solve my problem, okay, yes. that's it. So great. So we were talking about these emerging techniques. So how do we? Mm -hmm. How do you think we can stay updated on these emerging techniques? Do you have any suggestions for the same? Okay. I uh, yes. There is the easy answer, and then there's the hard answer. The easy answer is to subscribe to like these newsletters from you know they they do roundups uh, on what is the coolest stuff that's happening like. There's uh, roundups for AI. There's there's roundups on um, videos, and you know there are the different fields that are emerging, and they do roundup posts and then they share it, right? So if you are aware of what's coming in the horizon, like the best way to create the future is to go there and wait for people to catch up, right? Mm -hmm, so you mm -hmm. could you could totally do that. You can you could get informed, and then you could uh, you know uh, monetize it in some way. So that's that's one way. Okay. But the second, and this is my preferred favorite, mm -hmm. is what I call a sandbox on the side. And what I mean by that is, uh, I, I think Google had this with their 20% rule, you know, long back or something. You have your main business, okay? And okay. you're spending like about 80% of your time there. Okay. The rest 20% of your time, you use it as a sandbox. You use it to fool around. You use it to experiment. You use it to see, oh, okay, this is a cool thing. Let me see how it happens. You don't want to risk it on your main brand, right? So you you set up an alternate fake site. Not, I wouldn't say fake, but it's smaller, lower risk, uh, lower exposure sort of an entity. It could be a secondary Shopify store. It could be some consulting work that you're doing, right? Okay. Where you can test out new ideas. And uh, when I'm saying consulting, I don't mean like, you know, go mess up someone else's business. It's okay, like, okay. You, can, you know, you can experiment and you can uh, work on other people's stuff as well. And when okay. you do that, you will get firsthand experience of things that work for you, mm -hmm. uh, things that could work for you and things that may not. Right. So actually getting the hands on experience on trying different things, nothing beats it. So sandbox on the side. Yeah, I think that's that's the best out of the lot sandbox yeah. on the side i really love it <laughs> okay so it's great that's great thank you Arvind. so next uh the question what do you mm -hmm. think could be the best marketing media in 2024 mm. as you can see um well actually quick story my mom always said i had a face for radio so i decided to go whole hog on video and video okay. is definitely the uh 
big bet that I would have for 2024 mm -hmm. for multiple reasons, okay? Uh, one is that distribution, right? You have uh, YouTube, which is pretty much dominating the game. And you yeah. can take concepts from uh, SEO and all of that, and then you can translate onto that. So that's one. Mm -hmm. Second is that we have entire generations in the world right now who have never even seen a PC. Like the first computing device they have sure. is a phone. Right? And which is ridiculous, considering that, you know, I used to have these big box uh, CRT <laughs> monitors when I first got a PC back in like 1993 yes, yes. or something. Now, that's that's one thing, right? So when you're looking at mobile, when you're looking at uh, the, the way that, you know, distribution for video is greatly enhanced, pretty much all communication apps right now have video inbuilt or they're probably video first. Uh, the pandemic, of course, you know, helped things out by making video more mainstream. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, if someone is looking to dive in and uh, I would say at a high level, you take video, mm -hmm. then you can drill in a little bit deeper and you can do live video. And then you can drill in a little bit uh, deeper. The reason why I'm saying live video, okay, there is a reason for that as well. Because if you're going down just the video path, there are a plethora, there are a ton of tools available on the market. Uh, which can generate AI generated videos for you like that, right? Like, I think if you have like maybe like $300 and uh, about, about 30 minutes or something, you can get like 50 videos done. Okay, it's ridiculous. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. All I of think these AI are, is taking over everything. It is, it is, it is. And in a world where everything's being, you know, perfected and, and, and customized and tailored, people will start enjoy, enjoying this, 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 flawed human experience, if you will, yes. right? So going down the video route, if you are doing this, look at how you can leverage AI for informational videos, right? But information is just one side of uh, content. The other side is opinions, okay? This okay. is where the whole big boss reality TV show sort of thing kicks in. Okay. If you want to do that, live video is good. Like what we're doing right now, Mm -hmm. This is not mm -hmm. scripted, right? This is this is you and I just hanging out and we're talking. Yes. Imagine if you could do this like at scale with a bunch of different people. Mm -hmm. That's what live video is. So you do that. So go to video, then do a live video. And especially in the live video, if you can get, if you can showcase the humans behind the brand, like, you know, who could be the people who are building these products, who are shipping these products, running these businesses, right? So that's the third step. If you want to take it to the fourth level, Sorry, not step, but level, right? If you want to take it to fourth level, it would be live video showcasing all these humans behind the brand and you involve customers. So imagine, uh, Indra, like this conversation you're having, what mm -hmm. if you had that with, let's say, uh, a Shopify uh, store owner, right? Someone who's yes. actually doing all of this mm -hmm. and you did it live so you can accept questions from the audience and you know you can, you can make that an experience with uh, events, like with community and you can build them into it. And, and the ultimate step, the ultimate level would be live video where you're showcasing the humans behind the brand, mm -hmm. you involve the customers in the journey itself, right? So it's not just about getting them on the show or something, but you take their input, right? You're building something in private, but when you're sharing it in public, you take public feedback and you're building all of that. And then customers start feeling a great sense of ownership uh, with this, right? So yes. I think that's, yes. that's, that's, that's where my bet is, you know, live video. Okay. Where so I think the video is on top of the list, right? Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, because uh, as you said, uh, I think people don't have time to read or go through anything else. So when it's a video, it's quick and they can even play it and, you know, keep doing some of their work. Absolutely. So that's one thing. And uh, I love watching bloopers. So <laughs> yeah, that's something which I really like. I think I keep yeah. doing it often. So as you said, uh, in a generation where you see AI videos and everything, people will love to see someone who's real. So mm -hmm. yeah, Absolutely. the people who make mistakes. So I think, yeah, that's that's one of the major criteria which you've covered. Mm -hmm. And I love the live video part also. I think it increases your trust and credibility when you do so. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. All right. So all right, Arvind. So do you have any other tips and tricks for our Shopify store owners on their marketing strategies? Anything else which we would... Mm -hmm. uh Two things, two things. Mm -hmm. One, uh, I, you know, I'll just refer to a, a statement I said earlier, right? You have to be an artist in the streets and a scientist in the spreadsheets. And what I mean by that mm -hmm. is uh, take creative liberties when it comes to portraying yourself to your audience, right? You can be real, but you can also let loose with some of your eccentricity. So that's a good thing. And the other side is no matter what you're doing, right? You will be getting data. It would invariably be in some spreadsheet somewhere. So 
uh, approach that with a scientist uh, mindset. What that means is uh, before you try something, you write up a hypothesis saying that, okay, if I try this, I expect such and such a thing to happen because of such and such reason. Okay. Then you run your experiment uh, okay. and then you log the results and then you see, okay, did this go the way I expected it or not? Right. Okay. Uh, the smallest place you could try that would be in terms of, let's say, emails that you're sending out. Other things could be like programs that you want to run for your store, right? So either end of the spectrum. So artist and scientist, you need both of those to succeed. Okay. So just, just one last question I have sure. for you here. Now, from the beginning of this uh, conversation, I've noticed this word email, which keeps coming now and mm -hmm. then. So how often do you think we should, uh, you know, keep emailing our customers? How often ah. should we done? <laughs> So if you were um, building a, an, an authority-based business, I would be saying every day. But okay. for an e-commerce thing, uh, there are different uh, things that you have to consider uh, based on your frequency, right? Uh, you might be having sales. You might be having, uh, you know, and during sale times, you might probably want to like ramp up or something. But it comes down to how often can you look... <laughs> Oh, after after a while, right? People open emails not because of your subject line or the emojis that you have. That's all bullshit. Or after a while, people open it because every time they open that email in the past, they've got something of value. This value can be informational. It could be motivational. It could be entertainment. It could be inspirational. It doesn't matter, yes. right? Every time they open that, they get that dopamine hit. If you can consistently deliver that dopamine hit every single time you send out an email, you're golden, right? You can send an email like three times a day. And if you're still able to deliver that kind of value, you're sorted. Okay, so that's that's the first point, which we okay. need to use as ingredients. The second thing is how relevant are you, right? Like, like for example, let's say if I'm selling like, uh, uh, like recently I, I was buying, I was shopping from uh, some, some makeup uh, thingy, some makeup website for my okay. wife's, uh, uh, for something for my wife, right? Okay. And I, as a husband, I would uh, not be doing that kind of shopping. Now, now, let's say if I signed up and they sent me like emails every day about, hey, you should you know, use this kind of moisturizer or that kind of scrub. I'm like, <laughs> no, thank you. Have you seen my face, right? So I'm not going to be, uh, I'm, I'm, so you see what I'm saying, right? That, that, that sort of contextual awareness of how relevant um, product is going to be in the customer's life. That's a second ingredient. Okay. So first one was, can they get value every time they open it? Second is uh, how relevant can you be and how often can you be relevant, right? So to address both of these is where I was thinking of, uh, you know, you, you do the whole infotainment, like the whole reality TV show sort of a thing. Then you have a valid reason to email them every single day. Right? Okay. You could plug in a product uh, okay. What if, here's an example, okay? On the internet, uh, there is this, this, this entire thing about web comics, okay? Where artists, they draw comics and they set it out, like, you know, they publish an episode every week, okay? Now, take that idea. And uh, here's another idea from K-dramas, okay? K-dramas are Korean dramas. They're very popular yes. on Netflix. Yes, it uh, is. <laughs> my favorite is Hometown Cha Cha Cha, but don't tell my wife. Uh, I tell her that it's, all of us are dead. <laughs> but, but here's the thing, okay? No, I think she's going to be watching this podcast very soon and you're going to get caught. <laughs> okay, but, but, but there is, um, K-dramas are beautiful because they do fantastic product placement in them, right? So here, here, here's something that, that people watching this can try. They could hire a, a writer or a webcomic artist and get them to do comics for their product, right? Imagine shoes. And then they have like a daily slice of life thing with selling their shoes. And it's, it's a comic. And imagine you have a legitimate excuse to email your people. And, you know, it is very subtle product placement and you are giving them entertainment. And you could have like, hey, if you like this, uh, use this code, cool shoes. You know, you probably get a discount or something. Oh, that's you, nice. You see that? It's it's it's, it's interesting. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I should probably try this for myself. So, <laughs> so that was good. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So, I think uh, you we've almost covered all points, whichever the Shopify store owners wanted to know. Mm -hmm. All right. So, I think you know the viewers are they really want to listen to you more. So, where can they awesome. find you? 
Right. Uh, the best place is to go to my website. I run puttheplayerfirst.com, yes. where I help founders grow their businesses by turning business building into a fantasy adventure. So you go around killing monsters, uh, getting weapons, leveling up, all of those sort of things. So yeah, that, that would be the best place to find me. All right. So you're going to have a huge fan base soon. Awesome. <laughs> thank you so much Arvind thank you so mm-hmm. much for your time and mm-hmm. we'll very soon meet another interesting podcast with another interesting topic fantastic right? and thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for the opportunity Indra and sure. thank you to Shopify Made Easy as well I wish all of you the very best of luck great great so bye to all of you and see you soon another interesting session subscribe to our channel so that you do not miss out on any tips and tricks of Shopify thank you Arvind thank you so much for joining us sure Thank you for tuning into Shopify Made Easy. We will be bringing you more such interviews with experts to help you run a successful Shopify store. Until we see you next time, bye-bye.